Hello, my name is Julie Owens, and I am the case manager for Judge Gerald E. Rosen. And today I have him on the hot seat. And he's going to tell us a story about how he took an ordinary piece of cardboard and turned it into something extraordinary, which turned into be the grand bargain doodle. So, Judge, tell us how it all happened. It isn't often that a federal judge gets to be interviewed by his case manager, but Julie is certainly disruptive in a good way. That's good <laughs> so to we're, know. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're disrupting the usual relationship and stepping outside the process here. So I was at the very beginning of the bankruptcy uh, sitting uh, in Florida where I was with my 15, then 15-year-old son and trying to figure out a way to step away from what was being presented in the media and by everybody within the bankruptcy as a binary equation. The art collection at the DIA and the retirees and pensions and the very, very serious jeopardy that their pensions were in. So I had been talking to all of the lawyers in the case uh, and trying to get a sense of where they were and what their thoughts were. And I kept coming back to this idea that maybe it's not a binary equation. Maybe it's not the art or the pensions. Maybe it's some way we can use to monetize the art without liquidating the DIA and to give all of the proceeds from the art to the retirees to mitigate their losses in the pension. So that was the beginning of it. So basically you were kind of simplify it. You wanted to take it down, this equation down to its lowest common denominator. Yeah, in a way. I mean, I knew that there would be many, many financial and legal complications to it. I was not naive about it, but I did try to simplify it. So I was sitting there one morning down in Florida in this little condo, and I had this legal pad in front of me, except that I had taken notes. I was reading a lot and talking to people and taking notes, and uh, I had gone through all of the paper, and what was sitting in front of me was the cardboard backing uh, on the legal pad, and I just doodled this idea that I had, and in one circle I put state, because my first idea was to get the state to kickstart the funding, and in another circle in the middle I put art, and then in a circle to the right I put pensions, and then I drew arrows with dollar signs from the state to the art, and then from the art to the pensions, dollars, arrows with dollar signs, and then I drew a box around the art to in my mind anyway, symbolize that we would lock off the art from all of the other creditors by putting it in some kind of a trust and then give the proceeds that were raised to the retirees to mitigate their pension losses because I thought that would be an important first step in in resolving what was being presented as a binary equation. And then I wrote down below that a lot of uh, questions that came to mind. How much would it take? How okay. long would it take? What kind of legal structure? Tell us what happened with that piece of cardboard. Well, initially, I, I do, as you know, Julie, I do a lot of doodles. Yes. <laughs> and I, when I left, uh, I put it in a stack of stuff that I had taken with me to read, background reading, put it in a bag. When I got back to the office, I took it out of the bag and put it in a pile behind my desk and forgot about it. So when did <laughs> I, you I forgot remember about it? the sketch. <laughs> well, I remembered the idea. I never, I was very focused as you Remember, I was very focused on the idea. I immediately talked to the governor and got a very polite but resounding no, even more strongly from his staff that it was just people didn't want to do a, quote, bailout for Detroit. But I, I totally forgot about the doodle itself until about four or five months later. You'll remember what my office looked like. It um, looked like a hurricane. Cyclone. A cyclone had hit it. So I came in on the weekend to clean up, and I started going through the stacks, and I found this cardboard backing with the doodle on it. And by this time, the grand bargain had pretty much come together in the sense of getting the state to contribute, the foundations to contribute, and the DIA to contribute. And just coincidentally, uh, Eugene Gargaro, Gene Gargaro, the chair of the DIA's board, was coming in for lunch uh, the following week. So I put it on my desk, and when he came in, uh, I said, Gene, look what I found. And he said, oh, my God, we got to put this in the DIA. So it's now hanging in the DIA. So basically. By the, by the way, 
My grandmother, as you know, Julie, was a professional artist of some renown. She was very successful in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, she would be shocked to think that something I had drawn was hanging in a museum, hanging anywhere. Well, I agree because I own a piece of your grandmother's art that you graciously gave to me. So right. you became an artist I did. by default. You turned an ordinary piece of cardboard into a magnificent piece of art that is now hanging in the DIA. How does that make you feel? Uh, I'm pretty overwhelmed by the idea of it. I mean, the notion that something I did is hanging in one of the great museums of the world is pretty uh, mind-shattering. Uh, but I'm proud of it. I, I'm proud of what it represents because it really represents people coming together. Uh, it's a, as you would say, Julie, a disruptive idea that really did form, as Judge Rhodes said in his confirmation opinion, it formed the core of the consensual plan of adjustment that he confirmed on November 7th of 2014. So we can align these with the pure reinvention fundamentals. You disrupted the process with a doodle because no one would have ever imagined that. You connected people. You did. You connected it with the doodle, the whole process. You had movement because through that picture, it, you gave it life. And you also used your creativity, although Mike, not, not as artistic, her. but you use your creativity to really turn it into something magnificent and wonderful. And this is the story of the Grand Bargain Doodle turning something ordinary into something extraordinary. And I'm proud to be your case manager. 